Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Patrick Ray. I am one of the retirement advisors here with the Retirement Group, and we appreciate your attention today. Uh, we've got a great deal of information to cover with you uh, with relevance to our ConocoPhillips people, so we appreciate your attention. Uh, but before we get started, I got a couple of things that I'd like to cover with you. Uh, first and foremost, we are not affiliated in any way with ConocoPhillips, uh, nor are we affiliated with Fidelity. And as it turns out, our experience comes from the people who we've seen over the years who are in positions similar to yours, who are looking for a partner to transition into a successful retirement. And one of the many tools that we have to help you is an education process through this webinar series that we have that uh, you'll be able to learn and kind of understand some of the things that we talk to our ConocoPhillips folks about on a very regular basis. You're also going to see some links into the chat to give you access to some of the things we've recorded in the past. So if you have some time, you can peruse those at your own leisure, which uh, we would, of course, encourage you to do uh, when you have some free time. And uh, maybe most importantly, we have a very useful tool called a cash flow analysis, which is a complimentary service that we offer to our folks in an effort to help them see if they're on track to basically stress test their overall plans to ensure that they're going to end up meeting and exceeding their overall retirement goals and investment objectives. And so uh, if you hadn't already done something like this, please feel free uh, to reach out to us and we'll give you information later in the webinar in an effort to reach out to us to be able to do so. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to bring on uh, today's speaker and have you uh, enjoy our material. Tyson. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you everyone for joining our webinar series this afternoon. My name is Tyson Maybar, one of the ConocoPhillips focused advisors for the retirement group here in Texas. And today we're going to be talking about the big three increases for ConocoPhillips employees in 2022, uh, the stock price, interest rates, and inflation, and some of the implications of these three factors on the retirement plan for our clients and the people that we talk to and work with at ConocoPhillips. Uh, Patrick mentioned a little bit about our company. We've been in business for about 30 years. We have hundreds of clients from ConocoPhillips around the country. Uh, it's a variety of clients from other companies, but myself and Patrick and a few other of our advisors take a very specific interest in understanding the benefits plans at ConocoPhillips so that we can help people leave the company with the most money possible and the least risk of running out of money in retirement possible. So today we're going to talk about some issues of the pension, the 401k plan, some considerations, some big ones coming up here uh, for anybody who's even remotely close to retirement with regards to the pension plan and what we're doing with our folks, our clients from ConocoPhillips to help to protect against some of the very big risks that are coming up in our economy and in the retirement portfolios of people that are leaving ConocoPhillips or maybe have already left ConocoPhillips. Uh, what's happened uh, very fortunately in this last year, I'm not sure if everybody could see this, but the stock price has gone way up, as I'm sure every one of you are aware, uh, both your ConocoPhillips and Phillips 66 stock, but especially your ConocoPhillips stock. Uh, it's up 26% this year in 2022, uh, 81% uh, in the last 12 months. So this is a phenomenal uh, opportunity for some of you that you know may have had too much in ConocoPhillips stock to begin with, but have finally seen uh, some appreciation out of that stock. And uh, you may want to consider diversifying some of that stock at the very least into some other oil and gas companies and probably even throughout the economy as uh, this year has not been a great year for the stock market in general, especially when uh, looked at as the S&P 500. And there may be some good bargains available to start to diversifying and capitalizing on some of the gains that you've seen in your company stock. So that's something that we can help you with. We review 401k plans with not just our clients, but people that are maybe considering doing some business with us in retirement. And that's a great way to get a good feel for and going through these exercises, if it might be a good fit to work with our company. So let us know if you'd like to do a quick 401k review anytime in the near future. Now, what is most important currently is what's happening with interest rates and the implications of these interest rates on the ConocoPhillips pension plan. Now, remember, there are many different what they call titles or different types of pensions that are a function of where what company you started your career with. And the interest rates affect each pension differently. So this is where we encourage you to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with one of our ConocoPhillips focused advisors. So we can talk to you about the information that's relevant to you based on your pension and some of the timing issues that result from which interest rates affect your pension. 
and some of the risks going forward of staying at the company if you're considering taking a lump sum on your pension. I'm going to zoom in here because uh, this is probably the biggest takeaway of today's presentation is what's happened to the interest rates recently. Uh, we can see here the quarterly interest rates that are published from ConocoPhillips. Uh, these first three interest rates are corporate bond interest rates, short, intermediate, and long-term rates that affect lump sum pensions beyond 2008. Now, this is not if you are on a cash balance plan or have one of your plans as a cash balance. This is for the defined benefit plans. Uh, then we also have the 30-year treasury interest rate, which is for service prior to 2008. And then there's even a third rate that's not listed on here called the PBGC, uh, which affects the Conoco folks for service prior to 2000. So you can see there's a lot of moving parts here, but uh, the takeaway here, I'd like to focus your attention on this very bottom row, quarter two to quarter three change. The interest rates have changed on the first segment corporate bond rate, 1.28%. And this will go into effect for anybody who's still working and hasn't taken their pension by the third quarter or by uh, June of 2022. Uh, interest rates are up close to 1% on the second segment rate and about 0.84% on the third segment rate. And then only about just over half a percent on the 30 year treasury, but still a very large jump from one quarter to the next. So what does this mean in English? Well, depends on your age, but typically for every 1% increase to interest rates, there's about a 10% drop in your lump sum. And we're very close to that uh, relationship right now going from the second to the third quarter. If you're younger than age 60, this relationship is even more severe. The lump sum is more sensitive to interest rate fluctuations, the younger you are. So we have a lot of clients that are even in their late 50s, uh, some in their early 60s that are now considering accelerating their retirement date because it's possible you could be losing 10% or more on your pension overnight in the third quarter. And as it turns out, you actually have to retire by May 31st to get a June 1st benefit commencement date and therefore a second quarter commencement date to avoid this change in interest rates affecting your pension lump sum. So a million dollar pension, you could be losing $100,000 going into the third quarter. And for somebody that might not make all that much more than $100,000 in an entire year, this absolutely needs to be considered. If you are a few years out from retirement, you might not be able to afford to do this. Or what some of our clients are doing are considering leaving ConocoPhillips and finding a job, maybe contracting or consulting even with the company, or just uh, going to another position in the industry or leaving the industry entirely. Uh, but by leaving the company and taking your lump sum, not only can you protect your money from depreciating over the next quarter and maybe over the next several quarters in the future, which of course is unpredictable, but a, a continued risk of staying at the company, but then also have the opportunity to invest that money in an IRA, in your 401k or outside the pension plan uh, folks, this is something that you ought to be considering, and our best advice is to go into the pension modeler, compare a May 31st retirement to a June 30th retirement, uh, which will kick your uh, benefit commencement date out into the third quarter and show you what this interest rate impact is going to have in a dollar amount on your lump sum. And then talk to us. We can update your cash flow analysis or run one if we've never done one for you to see what are some of the considerations for staying at the company. The biggest one, of course, is your salary, uh, some other benefits that you likely qualify for in the company match, in your executive compensation benefits, uh, in the healthcare premiums that are cheaper while you continue working compared to after you leave the company and go on to the retiree plan. So a lot of moving parts, so it's important we do a cost-benefit analysis on the timing of your retirement, but we're only about a month away from having the ability to protect this money. So let us know if you'd like to talk to us or run a cash flow analysis and we can walk you through all of the considerations on leaving versus staying and hopefully give you enough food for thought to make a solid decision by the end of May on whether to leave or stay so that you don't end up having regret because you didn't do what was in your long-term financial best interest when you had the opportunity to. Now, we've also been talking to a lot of our clients about the impacts of inflation. Of course, we many of us didn't expect to have 40 year highs in inflation. 
And this, of course, impacts the, our cost of living in retirement, something that we can't always predict what we're going to need in the future, but try to stress test our plan, assuming that we'll need more than we uh, think we might be needing with our lifestyle today. But there's other impacts of inflation as well. So uh, first, we had this pandemic that we were all concerned about the economic impacts of and our government enforced and instituted both fiscal and monetary uh, policy measures to stimulate the economy. So uh, monetary policy, supply and demand of money, reducing interest rates to make money easier to borrow and helping to stimulate the economy. Also government spending, uh, fiscal policy stimulation, which is both reduction in taxes and increase to government spending. Uh, both of these contribute to inflation. And we've already seen it. It, it took about a year and a half. And honestly, our interest rates have been historically low for quite some time now, but they were unprecedentedly low for the previous two years. Now, there is an impact of this. There's a cost to this, and it's just higher cost or devaluation of our dollars that we are planning to spend in the future. Uh, there's another cost of this that not everyone's aware of, and it's the uh, connection with inflation and interest rates. The two are correlated. When inflation is higher, we typically see higher interest rates, and that has already proven true in just the last six months in the United States. So not only does this impact negatively your lump sum payout on your defined benefit pension, it also already has and probably will continue to impact the value of your bond holdings in your portfolio, which if you have any of the lifestyle or target date funds in your 401k, uh, or just any of the bond funds in there, you've likely seen losses in the last six months uh, to greater degrees than many people would expect they can see in bond holdings, which is typically the more conservative portion of a retirement portfolio. So these are big focuses at the retirement group with our clients on allocating the portfolio to fight inflation, to be able to keep up with it at the very least, so that not, we're not guaranteed losses of purchasing power over time by not at least keeping up with inflation. Uh, but then also understanding the dynamics of inflation, the impacts that has on stocks, uh, what types of stocks we favor in a portfolio as a result of a likelihood of higher inflationary environments. And so we'll talk a little bit today about uh, the opportunities that exist as a result of this. But here's just some actual numbers on inflation. Uh, highest in 40 years from uh, February to March, inflation increased to 8.5%. Uh, this is a year over year number. Uh, but the biggest contributor of this is to the increase of oil and gas prices, uh, which is a big part of our economy and what we spend money on in the United States, uh, surged to 18.3% month over month from February to March, which was the, excuse me, the highest contributor uh, to inflation over that time frame. And so this is very concerning to people that plan for maybe a 2 to 3% inflation rate throughout their retirement and what they expect in terms of how much money they need for the next 30, 40, maybe 50 years of their life after they leave ConocoPhillips. So first and foremost, we need to stress test the plan and expect higher rates of inflation. But we also want to be cognizant of how this inflation affects the asset prices in our portfolio and how we can protect our money as a result of the expectations of this inflation. But what we do at the retirement group and what most financial advisors do is construct portfolios uh, based on both asset allocation, how much do we buy in stocks, bonds, cash, real estate, uh, in commodities, uh, maybe annuities, uh, but also asset selection. What types of stocks are we buying? What duration of the bonds are we buying? What yields are we generating from both our stocks and our bonds? And how does inflation impact the growth of our value and our true purchasing power of our assets. Now we use, first of all, conversations with our clients to understand their risk tolerance, both their risk capacity, as well as their risk tolerance or appetite for risk. Everybody's different in this. And that's why it's important to have a relationship with somebody that understand what's going to allow you to be comfortable in retirement and not be pulling your hair out or losing sleep at night. And then ultimately uh, suffering from what is typically the worst thing you can do as an investor in retirement, which is panicking and selling your investments after they've lost value 
rather than understanding a good investment is going to fluctuate and we might have to hold it on, hold on to it for some time to truly allow it to appreciate and continue to fight inflation over time. We also have interactive worksheets and uh, various uh, exercises that we'll go through with our clients to better understand their comfort level as well as their expectations for growth so that they keep us around for the long run because our relation with our clients is a pay as you go and we have to continue to earn our clients relationships so we want to keep them happy and uh, keep their portfolios working for them in the long run. And we build portfolios using different types of investments, individual stocks, exchange traded funds, and what's broadly referred to as mutual funds, which are baskets of different types of investments. Could be stocks, could be bonds, could be portfolio of real estates. Uh, these are ways to get broad diversification, different types of investments, so we're not so darn reliant on one investment paying off. And we have a, a smoother growth pattern in retirement and just a better overall experience in retirement. Now, in the ConocoPhillips plan, they actually changed the investments back in October of last year. I got rid of some of the Vanguard funds, uh, of course, as a transition through the fidelity uh, process of changing the 401k plans. Uh, they've added some funds as well. And this is not necessarily a good or bad thing, but it needs to be considered when reevaluating your portfolio from time to time. Unfortunately, there are not a lot of good value options, value stocks available within the framework of the 401k plan. There is an option through what they call, it used to be the Vanguard broker, brokerage option. Now it's called Fidelity Brokerage Link, where you can gain more flexibility on your investment options uh, by removing a portion of your money, not all, but a portion of your 401k into an environment where you have the ability to buy a broader menu of investments. And they also have what's called an in-service rollover where while you're still working at the company, you can move money from your 401k into a traditional IRA, a Roth IRA, or even completely out of the retirement framework, which in many cases is in an incentive to have a broader menu of investments, be able to choose more investments to hopefully better protect your money or better grow your money by just having more options to choose from. So these are different types of things we talk about in our one-on-one -on -one meetings and make sure that it's appropriate prior to uh, utilizing one of these strategies from a tax perspective, make sure that you're being tax efficient as well whenever moving money from one retirement account to another. So we look at different considerations such as time frame, when you need the cash flow, your time frame to retirement as well as time frame to maybe large purchases, uh, your particular risk tolerance or maybe your and your spouse's risk tolerance, and your investment objectives, which in many cases it's tax efficiency, it might be gifting, it could be estate planning. Uh, there's a lot of different types of objectives. And so that's where Patrick and I and our other uh, retirement advisors will get to know what's important to you so that we can provide a solution that's consistent with those objectives. And we want to monitor this portfolio on an ongoing basis. We don't just get to set it up and then forget about it because there's going to be fluctuations in the portfolio that might warrant things like rebalancing, which is where you know, we're buying and selling stocks to maintain a long-term allocation, but then also potentially changing that long-term allocation. Uh, maybe you start out retirement with 60% of your money in stocks, and within five, 10 years, maybe you're down to closer to 50% of your total allocation in stocks because you could be more conservative psychologically, uh, maybe your cash flow need has changed. So we always have to continue to revisit this and make sure that the investments are appropriate to provide the cash flow that you and your family need in the timeframes that you need it to do the things you want to do in retirement. And it's very unfortunate that this is not the easiest thing to talk to people about. This is not the easiest thing for people to think about. Uh, statistically, 74% of Americans over the age of 50 do not have a written plan for their retirement. And statistically, unfortunately, people spend more times throughout their life planning for vacations than they will for their retirement. And as it turns out, retirement is just a long vacation. So spend some time, folks, and uh, we're willing to spend some time on a complimentary basis, whether or not you're a client. The cash flow analysis is a complimentary tool that we provide to people at ConocoPhillips. It's helpful to us because it gives us a better chance of earning your business 
and we think we have a pretty compelling argument on why you might consider working with us among the many options you have of advisors in this retirement transition process. Uh, but it, it's at no cost. We're willing to spend some time with you if you're willing to spend some time with us. Um, there's a variety of companies out there that understand the Conoco uh, Phillips benefits plans. We think we're the best, but we encourage everybody to get multiple opinions. We might not be the best fit for you. Some of the things that people have told us are important to them about the advisory relationship are understanding the benefits plans, of course, and having a track record of working with people in your situation, uh, understanding the costs and making sure that those costs are, there's value being provided for those costs. You definitely don't want the most expensive advisor out there, but you probably don't want the cheapest advisor out there either. So understanding what you get for uh, what you're paying for, I think is very important. Uh, make sure whoever you work with is uh, just not a one person shop, that they have a team behind them for a variety of reasons so that they can delegate tasks such as uh, research on uh, tax rule changes, research on investments, uh, research on the benefit plan changes, uh, placing trades, doing marketing. All of these things are different aspects of a good advisory group. And we think we do a pretty good job of uh, separating those tasks out so that we can do, Patrick and myself and our other advisors, a better job of communicating with our clients because we're not doing all the heavy lifting behind the scenes. And just understanding what it is you're looking for. How often do you want to talk to your advisor? How often do you expect them to reach out to you? Uh, what type of advice are you looking for? Is it purely just management of investments? That would be a lot cheaper if that's all we had to do uh, for us in terms of time. Uh, but you may be looking for help with the distribution strategy and tax efficiency on withdrawing. You may be looking for advice on the timing of your retirement and how to treat different benefits plans when you leave the company. Uh, you might, it may be very important to you on what custodian you use. And we happen to use Charles Schwab as a custodian. So different from Vanguard and Fidelity, but a very good brand, which is the reason that we choose as an independent advisory group to use them as a custodian. All these things are things you want to figure out before you retire, in my opinion, and there's a variety of things you can do to start developing a relationship with one or maybe a couple different advisory groups prior to decision making time, which we certainly think would be a good investment of your time. And just making sure that they will run a complimentary cash flow analysis or retirement plan for you and then continue to update that as changes to our environment warrant changes to the plan. If you'd like to talk with myself, Patrick, or any number of our Conical Phillips focused advisors on a one on one basis. You can email us at info at the retirement group .com. You can call us at 800 900 5867. Uh, or you can take a picture of this QR code here and get on one of our calendars for even just a 10 or 15 minute consultation. Hopefully, we can add some value to your retirement strategy. And I also encourage everybody to follow us on LinkedIn as we uh, will continue to produce content related to the Conical Phillips retirement strategies and updates on the interest rate that are. So important, especially if you're considering a lump sum on your pension plan when you leave. So with that, we're going to wrap it up, but I think we have some time for questions, Patrick. So I'm going to pass it back to you if we have any specific questions that we can answer on today's webinar. Yeah, thanks, Tyson. We do have um, some very good questions, so I'll get right into it. So this is a great question about the ConocoPhillips uh, pension plans. And the question is, I have two Burlington Heritage pensions and they're curious as to know why this is the case. And then do they get both or how do they choose which one of those is the best option for them? Yeah, good question. Not everybody has two pensions that are Heritage Burlington, but uh, it's most likely that you have both a cash balance and a defined benefit plan. Uh, these are affected differently by interest rates and they're based on different portions of your career. The defined benefit plan is the one that has an inverse relationship. The lump sum has an inverse relationship to interest rates. Uh, the defined contribution plan actually benefits from higher interest rates because it grows faster uh, in a higher interest rate environment. And so uh, my best advice is to talk with myself or one of our uh, advisors at the company on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, you do get both, as it turns out, and there's different elections on both. So we can help you understand the important considerations when picking which way to go, the timing, and everything that's going to affect how to elect that pension so you optimize what you get out of the company when you leave. 
Yeah, I would also add the good news is if you have two plans, you don't have to make the same election on both plans. So it gives you a lot of flexibility with respect to other planning areas and things, as Tyson mentioned, that uh, you just want to reach out to us to see which one of these is best for you. Um, Here's a great uh, ConocoPhillips related question about the interest rates. And the question is, I well, was a statement here, but I watched the ConocoPhillips interest rates video update last month. By the way, uh, you can follow us on LinkedIn to get this link. So when we come with, out with this, you can follow us uh, and get the update. And you mentioned that treasury rates versus corporate rates are different. And the question is, how do I know what ConocoPhillips rate affects me? Yeah, again, this is, there's so many moving parts in this pension. That's why we'd like to have these one-on-one -on -one conversations. But just big picture, we'll talk about this on the, the main three plans that I run into, which is the Heritage Conoco, the Heritage Phillips, and the Heritage Burlington uh, pension plans. So, and this is assuming you're on the defined benefit plan. If you moved over to the cash balance plan, this is not the case, what we're about to talk about. If you are on the Heritage Burlington plan, as well as the Heritage Phillips plan, your service beyond 2008 uses the corporate bond interest rates or the segment rates. Those are those three rates we saw earlier. The second segment rate carries the most weight of those three rates. Uh, it affects the present value calculation on your future annuity payments more than the other two. For your service, from well, for Burlington and Phillips employees, service prior to 2008 uses the 30 year treasury rate, which could be the majority of many of the people on today's webinar's career, uh, which didn't go up as much or won't be going up as much in the third quarter as the corporate bond interest rates, uh, but still uh, carries a lot of weight and still went up a, quite a bit in half a percent, which could mean a 5% reduction on that part of your pension. And to make matters more confusing for the Heritage Conoco folks, there's a third interest rate that affects your service prior to 2000. So this is not the case for Phillips or Burlington folks, but uh, Conoco employees, Conoco Heritage employees service prior to 2000 uses the PBGC or Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation interest rate, uh, which is the lowest and most favorable rate. And as a result, results in the highest lump sum payouts for any of the employees that we run into, the Heritage Conoco folks. So all of this, and you'll notice when you go to run your pension projections, there's a variety of assumptions you can make on changing interest rates. And this is where we would like to spend some time with you so that you are running your future projections correctly and understand the implications of each one of these rates correctly to avoid uh, losing money unexpectedly when these rates go up on us, which they happen to be doing this year. So we're delighted to go through this exercise with anybody who still works at ConocoPhillips, whether you're not a, whether or not you're a client of ours, uh, usually only takes about 10 to 15 minutes. We'll run a couple different illustrations and talk to you about the implications and then put it into a cash flow analysis if you have interest in going through that exercise with us. Here's another question about the ConocoPhillips pensions. And I think this may even be the same person with a different question, which is I have two Burlington Heritage pensions and historically, how much can the interest rates technically change or rise in one calendar year? Can they go up by one or 2%? Is that actually possible? And honestly, sky is the limit. There is no limitations on how quickly these rates can rise. But historically, in the last 30 years, and, and you were working for the company, Patrick, I, this is before my time at the retirement group. But in the 90s, there were two instances where interest rates went up just about 2%. and over 2% in one year. So that could be, in many cases, 20 to 25% drop in your lump sum, potentially in one year. Not common, but certainly possible and worth paying very close attention to this, especially if you're close to retirement and have any interest in taking a lump sum. Now, if you plan on taking the annuity, there's less implications on these interest rates on your lump sum. So uh, if there's any possibility you may take a lump sum, you need to pay attention to this, folks, because it could make or break your retirement if you don't. Yeah, absolutely. And what's unique about the way the system works at ConocoPhillips is it gives you some foresight so that you can at least do some planning. It's not just going to hit you overnight and say, oh, by tomorrow you have to have this done. But sometimes it's a short order thing. And I think maybe the most important um, takeaway from what we're discussing is not necessarily retiring because you're in a position to retire and 
go financially off into the sunset and just do what you wish to enjoy doing, but maybe to just maximize or think in terms of maximizing what's available to you from a capital perspective, which means you might uh, be able to change direction and go to a, a new firm or a new company and do something a little different and maybe not even be required to make as much money because what you've taken advantage of uh, and of course the risks of not doing so uh, sooner rather than later. Um, Here's another uh, lump sum pension related question for ConocoPhillips. And based on what you're saying, uh, my ConocoPhillips lump sum could potentially drop by 25% if rates go up by two and a half percent. Is that correct? And then that really worries me. And do you have a tool or a way to assist me in calculating the impacts of these interest rate changes and the effectiveness of the change of my retirement date? Yeah, if you've never done so, you could do this from the link to your pension model or on the Fidelity website, just log in. We'll help you. We're very familiar with the website and navigating it and can help you with the uh, assumptions that are being made, not just with the timing of your retirement, but also the benefit commencement date, which as it turns out, don't have to be the same time. You can wait to take your pension. And oftentimes that doesn't make sense, and especially right now while interest rates are rising. But there could be some reasons to consider that, especially if you're not yet age 60 and have some age penalties. But then also the interest rates and how they affect each one of each segments of your pension, uh, putting the correct numbers in there is key. And then also having some knowledge about what's happened historically. So you could see, well, if I'm planning on retiring in two years, but interest rates go up 2%, how much do I lose on my pension? And might it be worth considering leaving the company earlier to actually have more money as it turns out in retirement and whether or not you have to take a part-time or full-time job. These are good things to know now before it's too late. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this next question about um, interest rates and inflation and the pension is similarly correlated to what we've been talking about, but I'm not ready to leave ConocoPhillips as the statement, but I feel like it's time to go because of some of these things we're talking about. And I haven't thought about the effect of inflation and what it means to my pension specifically. And if interest rates continue to rise, why plan? I guess the question is, you know, why plan for that? Well, my answer to that would be why not plan? And there, there's so many upsides to put to planning and knowing how these various variables affect each part of our retirement plan. Look, we don't know where inflation is going to go. We don't know where interest rates are going to go, but the fact that it's possible these could have a detrimental impact on your retirement plan might change your mind on how you feel about where you're working right now, how much you're saving right now. You might consider saving more and spending less right now. Uh, there's two benefits to this, by the way. Of course, saving more, you'll have more money uh, in most cases, but uh, by saving more, we condition ourselves to a, a tighter budget. Uh, maybe a more modest lifestyle, which makes that transition to retirement a lot easier uh, rather than having a hard stop and, and having to spend a substantially uh, lower amount of money in retirement. So the importance of planning is not getting to a point where you've made some irrevocable decisions and it's too late to change what you wish you could have in the past. That's the importance of putting the plan together. Yeah, I completely agree. And as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, you know, the significance of understanding all this stuff and how it impacts you can't possibly be a waste of your time. If nothing else, you'll be educated on what it does or doesn't do for you and what it does or doesn't enlighten you to if you already had known some of these things or just wanted a confirmation of what the actual numbers were by running projections and doing some planning. And, you know, in the worst case scenario, you invest a few minutes of your time and find out that you're on track to meet your goals. And some of these things aren't a concern of yours. And therefore, you don't need to make an adjustment in the you know, planning stages or in the context of where you're working or what you're earning or what you're saving. But the fact of the matter is part of our responsibility from Tyson's perspective and mine and our companies is to help you understand that the idea is to maximize the capital that's available so that you can ensure you have a successful retirement for your lifetime. And one of the things you must consider in this particular environment that we're in, in our opinion, is to understand how this actually affects you or in some cases doesn't affect you. And so in most cases, you're going to see if the rising interest rate environment is where we're at today, which is where we are, that in turn, you're going to continue to think about how that impacts your lump sum. The fact is you'll want to know what that means to you 5, 10, 15 years down the road. And you do that by doing some planning. That's what the cash flow analysis is all about. 
Okay, last question for you, Tyson. Um, I watched the ConocoPhillips interest rate update video, and since there was a 1% change in interest rates, uh, and we talked about the impact of what that means, do you have an estimate on how much that means to my pension and how it will be impacted? And do you predict that there will be another 1% interest train, uh, change next quarter? Yeah, the significance of an interest rate increase is also a function of your age. The younger you are, the more severe that uh, increase in interest rates is going to be, the more severe the impact will be on your pension lump sum. A good rule of thumb is every 1% increase to the rates is about a 10% drop. This could be anywhere from 8 to 12% if you're somebody in your early 50s to mid 60s. So I can't predict without knowing more about your situation, but it would just be very easy to go into the modeler and look at different time frames and see how your pension has uh, grown as well as will be shrinking in the next quarter. Um, I think it's very possible that rates go up another 1%, and this is another reason why people tell me that their philosophy is a bird in the hand is better than two in the bush. The bird in the hand is, is taking your money now, what you know you'll have, and two in the bush is waiting and watching your pension lump sum progressively deteriorate every quarter that you continue working at the company, which we can't predict that might be the case. Hopefully they stay relatively flat, at least in the sake of the people that are planning on taking a lump sum and are not psychologically or financially ready to retire, but we just don't know. So understanding whether or not you can afford to retire, I think is a good starting place. Uh, if you can afford to retire, do you need to go get another job? How much do you need to bake? How long do you need to work? Or should you just stay put at Conical Phillips? And all these things are possibilities, but everybody's going to have a different answer depending on their overall situation. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll finish up with just adding to that, that this may mean that some of you who think in the back of your mind, the appropriate time from an IRS perspective is 59 and a half because of the penalties that you've heard of before that are correlated to retiring or leaving a company and needing income, but not yet being that age of 59 and a half, I might encourage you to watch one of our um, exception rule videos, which we have, uh, which you have access to in the links in chat um, so that you can educate yourself. And certainly we're delighted to talk to you about this because there are ways that you can reach in to the capital that you've saved and help supplement a job from another place if you're considering trying to maximize what you have at Conical Phillips, And so that's a thought among many other things that we could potentially help you with. So with that, we'll leave you for the afternoon. We appreciate your attention. We hope you found some value in spending some time with us today. And until next time, everyone stay safe. We'll see you.